Today I'm going to be going over some of the basic navigation within the Voice Console GUI. I'm going to log in with an account that has full administrative rights. So you'll be able to see everything that I can as an administrator. However, if the login that you yourself have for your Voice Console application does not have full administrative rights, some of the things that I show you today will not be available for you or they will be grayed out. So upon logging in, the first thing that you will see is your summary page. Now you can arrange these summaries any way that you like, simply by grabbing a hold of them and dragging and dropping them to change their position. You can add a summary. However, in this case, I have all of the summaries available displaying, so there are no more for me to add. You can also remove them by clicking the X, and it will give you an option. Do you want to remove this? And you can say yes, and then it will no longer display. If you want to add it back in, you simply say add a summary, and it will show up here as the only one and you just say add this summary and it's back. The next tab that you have is your administration tab and again if your account does not have permissions um, to do administrative uh, actions in the GUI you're not going to either see this tab at all um, if you have none in the administrative tab or if you have been granted some rights here but not others you will be able to see the administration tab, but you will have some of the items on this side missing. The next tab is the Voice Console tab, and it is from this tab that most supervisors are going to work. When you click on it, you will be dropped automatically into your operator management area. And then there is also the device management tab, which will show you all of the devices that you have at the site. Now the first thing that we want to cover are filters. Um, oftentimes you may come in here and you're looking for a device and you're like, well, wait a minute, I, I know that I have more than two devices at the site. Why do I only see two? The first thing you want to look at is see if you've got a filter applied. So if you click on manage filter, it would show you what filters are, are here. In this case, I don't have any. So I'm going to go ahead and add a filter. I'm going to say that I want to add by the serial number of a device. And you have some options here when you're doing a filter. Um, it will be different for each type of filter, but you can select from the drop down to, you know, do you want to starts with, ends with, contains, or is equal to. In this case, I'm going to say starts with, and I'm going to put in 59 and I'll add that filter. And once you do that, you'll see that the other device in the site is no longer there. Now, if I close this, now you'll see up here under View Devices that it is filtered by serial number. So again, if you come in and you're not seeing all of the devices that you think you should, check this filtered by. And if you just X on that, it will remove the filter and voila, all of your devices will be showing again. An important note about filters is that the filters you apply under your login will only be there for you. Um, so, you know, if you have a login for every person who would go in and manage your voice console, they're not going to be able to see the filters that are under your login. So the next thing we want to look at is adding and removing columns. Um, so you can see here we have many different columns that show us a lot of information about the device. Uh, the same thing is true on operator management. You can see that there are columns for the operator management as well. And also the same thing for your task packages. Basically every page that you can view in Voice Console is going to have a default set of columns but it will also have additional columns that you can add. To do that, you just click on Add and Remove Columns, and you'll see the entire list of what is available to you. If you don't want a column that is currently showing, you simply uncheck it and it will be removed. 
But when you add another column, such as the voice client version, it will always add the new column at the end of your column list. Now you can rearrange these columns to better suit the way that you want to look at things. So this column that I just added, I can grab it and drag it over and drop it so that it is more easily visible and I don't have to scroll over. You can also change the width of columns. If you hover and get that little straight up and down arrows, it allows you to change them. And this is very useful because, you know, each person is going to work in Voice Console the way that it is best for them. And it allows you to customize the view that you're seeing. One tip that I'd like to give concerning just general navigation within the Voice Console application is that you should never really use this back button on your browser. You should always navigate in Voice Console by actually selecting an item under navigation or selecting to go to a location by clicking on the menu up above. Using the back button can potentially cause problems with your Voice Console application. Another useful feature of the GUI is the search option. Now it should be noted that if you have a login that only allows you to see one site in your voice console and you have multiple sites being managed in a single voice console, there may be times when your search will find something that you're not going to be able to view or it may not find it at all. Um, just something to be aware of there. So the search option, it allows you to type in just about any, anything that you want and you just say go and it will pull up a list of everything that it finds that has 59 in it. In this case, it finds one device match and if you click on that, it will take you to view that device. Another option that you have in the GUI is the application help and the help for this page. Both of these are in the upper right corner and unlike some application helps they actually do have a lot of good information. So help for this page it will show you information related specifically to the page you're on and application help will take you to the full menu of the application help. On the newer versions of Voice Console Clicking on these will open up a new tab that takes you to the Honeywell Online Application Help pages. On older versions of Voice Console, it will open up a tab in the browser that is actually pointing to an internally installed application help file. So as you can see, when I clicked on the help for this page while on the view device, it takes me to the devices page in the application help. And from here, you can go through everything that is available on that page and it will explain to you a little bit about what that information means. You also have the option, as I noted earlier, to click on application help itself, which takes you to the main menu of the Voice Console online help. From here, you can click on any of these icons below to take you to a general um, you know, page for, in this case, configuration parameters or troubleshooting, or if you are an IT department in the process of wanting to install a new instance of Voice Console, the implementation guide can guide you through that. Um, their application help is fairly extensive for online. Um, but if you do happen to come in and find something that you don't necessarily understand or that is confusing to you, um, such as if you come in and you're looking at your speech parameters, if you have questions about anything like this, you can always reach out to the Mountain Leverage support team and we can assist you further. All right, so coming back to your voice console. I just want to show you that in Voice Console, there is usually more than one way to get from here to there. So in this case, um, for device management, if I want to view devices, I can click on View Devices, or 
I can click on device management and it takes you to the same place. Um, similarly, if you are on the operator management tab and you click on device management, it takes you to the view devices by default. When you want to look at a device itself, you can highlight the device and under device actions, select to view the selected device. And that will take you to the view device page. Or when you are on the device page, you can click directly on the hyperlink for the device name and it does the same thing. In the same vein of thought, um, there are more than one way to do some of the tasks that you want to accomplish in Voice Console. For instance, if you're enabling logging on the device, the most common way to do it and the easiest is to highlight the device, come over to Manage Devices under your device actions, and then select to enable logging for the selected devices. However, you can also enable logging by clicking directly on the device, opening the device page, saying edit this device, and if you scroll down, you will see the option here for logging. In this case, this device is already logging. Um, if I want to turn that logging off, I just say to disable it, scroll all the way down, and say save changes. And you'll get a confirmation that this device was modified. In this case, it is stopping the logging. So those are just some of the basics for navigating through the Voice Console GUI. As always, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to the Mountain Leverage support team, and we would be more than happy to help you.